Welcome back. In the previous lecture, we found the time dependence of the operators of a qubit pair. In this lecture, we meet for the first time a continuous quantum degree of freedom, namely that of motion along a line. So far, we have been considering systems where we have two, three, four, maybe a larger, finite number of states, and so there were two, three, four, or a larger, finite number of kets that would make up a ket basis, and the same number of bras would make up a bra basis, and so forth. Now, we have to move beyond that and consider the situation where we have a continuum of values available. So, imagine that we have a particle that moves along, say, the x-axis. So, somewhere we have x equals zero, and then here is a particular value x1, and there's another value x2, and so forth. And now, to describe this, we will assign a ket that we label with x, and that refers to the situation the particle is at x. Or if we want to be very careful in what we are saying, it refers to the situation where we sort of idealize a particle being at x. I will talk about this idealization in a little while. And then there is a corresponding bra that means the same thing, only that it's now using a bra rather than a cat. And so, if we think of what we have in the finite dimensional situation, where we would describe the state cat as the sum over basis cats, let me call them bk, and amplitudes psi k, where we now have the state ket, and then we have the ket that refers to particle at x, a wave function that will now depend on the continuous label x rather than the discrete label k, and then rather than summing over k, we now have to integrate over x as the proper analog for such a continuous variable. And then, of course, we also have the corresponding bra, and so that would be an integral over x, and here we have the complex conjugate wave function, and then there is the bra x. So I'm just taking the adjoint in the usual way, where product of a ket and a number is turned into a bra and a complex conjugate number. And this happens for all values of x. Now, this could be, say, state 1, and this could be for state 2. So we will have a psi that goes with 1, and a, and a psi that goes with 2. And so, earlier when we had this situation, of a cat referring to situation 1, a bra referring to situation 2, or vice versa. Here I have the bra for situation 1 and the cat for situation 2. Then this bracket would be equal to the sum over the psi k for situation 1 complex conjugate for the bra, and psi k for situation 2. And so, what do we have now as the analog of that? Well, now we would write 1, 2 as the integral over x, summation here, integration there, and then it's the psi 1 at x complex conjugate, the analog of that, and the psi 2 of x as the analog of that. So it's quite the same thing, except that here we had a, a basis of kets made up of a finite number of of uh, cats that we label, say, with k equals 1, 2, 3, and so forth. Now we have a basis that is made of a continuum of cats that we label with the position x. Okay, so then what, what happens if we 
we go back one step and we say the one two well it's it's the bra that goes with one so that would be the integral over x the psi one of x complex conjugate the bra for x and then we have the ket for two so taking the adjoint of this now and so to not have any confusion i will now integrate over x prime and then we have the x prime uh, ket and the psi 2 of x prime wave function all right so uh, let's see how these things go together so this would be now an integral over x and an integral over x prime there is the psi 1 x complex conjugate the x x prime bracket and the psi 2 x prime uh, wave functions for the ket 2. So over here the analog of this situation would be a sum over k and k prime where we have the psi k 1 complex conjugate and the bk bra and then we have the bk prime get and the psi 2 k prime amplitude so of course here we will just refer to the Kronecker delta symbol which is 1 if k is equal to k prime and zero else and then this double sum collapses into the single sum that we have here so what do we need over here what what do we write for this bracket of x and x prime so first of all if the particle is as x then it is not at x prime if the two are different so we need to get zero when x is not x prime but what do we get when x is equal to x prime well we need we need something here that turns this integral into this integral and the answer for that is the analog of this discrete Kronecker delta symbol for which we write delta of x minus x prime and this is called the Dirac delta function this function is is rather peculiar because it's not like any other function that we know so in particular we need it to be such that when we integrate over it we get one such if we sum over k or k prime here we, we get one and we need to get one when we integrate this over x or x prime to make these things consistent so let's take a closer look at these matters so i repeat when we look at this one two bracket which we express by integrating over the wave function complex conjugate wave function for one because it's a bra wave function for two because it goes with the ket but if we earlier had the x and x prime ket and bra notation then we have this bracket of x and x prime and i've introduced this symbol delta x minus x prime for that situation and we already understand that when x and x prime are different then this is essentially zero x and x prime are the same then it has to be um unity in a particular sense namely such that when we integrate this over x prime and we get the value of this function at x so here we have this Dirac delta function x minus x prime there is a function of x prime we integrate over x prime we get this function at x so it, it sort of maps the whole function which has all the values of x prime onto the particular value which which is selected by the delta function so no ordinary 
delta x minus x prime, no ordinary function in the place of x minus of delta x minus x prime can do that. It is it is a particular kind of generalized function that mathematicians call a distribution. But we will continue to use physics jargon where we talk about the Dirac delta function and we understand that this is its defining property. Now, for this to be meaningful, the Psi 2 of x has to be a meaningful quantity. So, which means that this function Psi 2 has to be continuous in x. It cannot be that there is a place where it jumps because then we don't know what is the value of the function at this position. We approach from values which are smaller, we get one value at the jump. If we come from values which are larger and approach x, then we would get a different value. So we cannot, we cannot tolerate discontinuity. So this, this integration with the delta function of some function psi 2 of x prime gives a meaningful result only if this function is continuous at the point selected by the delta function. Now, this is all very nice, but we have to be a bit more detailed about it. And for that, I will consider what we call a model of a delta function, or actually models for the delta function. So a model for the Dirac delta function or Dirac delta distribution is a sequence of ordinary functions that approximate the Dirac delta function in a limit. And for that, I will just write down what I mean. So if I have a model which is characterized by a parameter epsilon, then this will be of the form that I integrate over parameter k, there is a function that specifies the model where I have k times epsilon as the argument, and then I have e to the i k x minus x prime as a function, and this is a model for the delta function in the following sense. So we need two properties for this function, the d with argument phi that has to go to zero as the argument becomes arbitrarily large, positive or negative. This is why I'm writing the absolute value. And, and it approaches one as phi goes to zero. And here I'm not writing absolute values because phi to zero from negative or positive values is still phi going to zero. So, we need this as a property for this phi, and then when the delta x minus x prime for epsilon, and we take the limit where the epsilon goes to zero, and usually this epsilon is positive in this process, then this will be a model for the, the Dirac delta function. And to, to illustrate what this means, so this is a model for delta x minus x prime, where for every finite value of epsilon, as long as the epsilon is, is positive, in this limit where it approaches zero, where it's positive for all values in this approach, then these, these delta x minus x prime for a fixed value of epsilon, they're all ordinary functions. They only become particular peculiar, singular, in that Dirac delta function sense, when we take the limit epsilon to zero. So here is an example. So for the example, I use the d of phi as e to the minus absolute value of phi. Okay, so we can verify that if the absolute value of phi goes to infinity, the d goes to zero. Clearly it does. As phi goes to zero, the d is one. Clearly that's true. And now if I 
work out this integral that we have to do here. So I have e to the minus absolute value of k epsilon and then e to the i k x minus x prime. As I work this out, I get 1 over pi epsilon divided by x minus x prime squared plus epsilon squared. And now you can see what happens. Okay? As epsilon goes to zero, when the x and the x prime are not equal, when this is a finite square, epsilon goes to zero, this epsilon square becomes unimportant, this epsilon turns into zero, the whole function turns into zero. Okay? So it's just like we want it here. However, if x is equal to x prime, then this expression is 1 over epsilon. Uh, epsilon goes to 0, it becomes infinite. Okay? And so, if we wish to graph this, so here we have x prime, here is our particular point x, then the graph of this function will be such that it is a very narrow peak with a width which is proportional to epsilon and a height which is proportional to 1 over epsilon. So as epsilon goes to zero, this peak shrinks in width but increases in height such that the area under the curve is equal to 1. And so we can verify that if I integrate over x prime, I integrate this delta x minus x prime epsilon, then this is just the uh, simple integration where the antiderivative is an inverse tangent, an arc tangent, and we just get one. Okay? So that's a typical example for such a model for the delta function. As long as the epsilon is finite, these are ordinary functions. Epsilon is very small. It's a function which has a very narrow, very high peak. The area under the function is 1 for all values of epsilon. Now, we multiply this with another function. And so, uh, maybe I will use a red color. So we multiply this with another function, which is... A well behaved continuous near this x, and so we now integrate we integrate over x prime. We have this model of the delta function, and we have this function of x prime. So now remember what we just said in the limit that we need to consider where epsilon goes to zero and epsilon is positive in the limit. So we have to consider very small values of epsilon. For very small values of epsilon, this model function is such that it has a very narrow, very high peak. And so the only values of the function f of x prime that matter are the ones at the peak. And so it, it will be all right to replace f of x prime, f of x, because only the function values near x x prime equals x matter at the point that is selected by the, the delta function and the function is continuous so there's no there's no big change of the function if this interval is small enough which it will be when the epsilon goes to zero so what, what I'm saying is that it's okay in this limit to replace the f of x prime by f of x after which this integration is left for the x prime part, and that gives 1. And so we get f of x when we are finished with this procedure. So in this sense, this particular example is a model for, for the delta function, but we can have other d of phi functions entering here. As long as they have these properties, it will always define a good model of the delta function. So, in the sense that I just described, 
and the bracket of a position bra with a position ket is the Dirac delta function. And in a loose way of speaking, this means that it is zero when x is not equal to x prime and infinite when x is equal to x prime. But don't take this literally. Have to fall back on this idea of a model of the delta function if we want to be precise about things. But what, what is essential is that if I have the delta function of x minus x prime, a function of x prime, an integrate of x prime, I get that function at x, and the function for this to be meaningful has to be continuous. So let me just add x. Otherwise, this makes no sense. Now, this is, of course, a statement about orthogonality. Uh, which is analogous to what we had for the discrete basis before, where we had the Kronecker delta symbol, which is 1 when k and k prime are the same, k is the same and 0 if they are not. So there is a normalization involved. Now, if, if I would evaluate this bracket for x and x prime referring to the same point, I don't get 1. For the, as for the normalization, I get something which is ill-defined. It's infinite in this uh, loose way of talking. And that is just a reminder that these cats and bras that we use for referring to a particular position, they themselves do not describe physical states of the system because they involve an over-idealization, namely our capability of talking about the position of a particle with absolute precision. But we never have this kind of knowledge. We never know where a particle is with absolute precision. We can know it very well, but we never have the resources or the, the amount of information that would enable us to give an absolute precision to the position of a particle. We don't know this much about a continuous variable. Okay, so, so these states x and x prime, they are not physical states. They do not describe a physical situation. But they are very useful mathematical objects that over-idealize on this physical situation. And we will, we will learn what that means uh, in more precise terms and so that this over idealization isn't going to hurt us. Now, if this is an orthonormality statement with normalization not to unity but normalization in the sense of this Dirac delta function, then we should also have the other side of the same coin, namely a completeness relation. So for these dis discrete terms, that was the expression where we sum over all ket bras and get the identity. Now for the on the x side, this would look like the ket bra of x with itself, and that should be the identity. Well, let's see if that is meaningful. For that, we look at the identity squared. Well, the identity squared is still the identity. So let's see how this works out. I have the identity, and I have the identity again. So that's identity times identity. That should be equal to the identity. Okay, so let's, let's work on this. There's an integral over x, there's an integral over x prime. And then we have the ket x, we have the x, x prime bracket, and the x prime bra. Aha! But here we have the Dirac delta function. And as we integrate it over x prime, it gives us the value of the function, which is this bra of x prime, at x prime equals x. So this x prime integration with the delta function and 
and the, the bra x prime will just give us the bra x. And yes, we are back to where we started. So, yes, this is, this is a meaningful expression for the identity. We square it, we still have the identity. So we have here the completeness relation for these position cats and also the completeness relation for the position bras. And as always, this completeness relation just means that if I have a generic cat, I can write it as a linear combination of the basis cats. Well, how does this work? Well, we just multiply with the identity. And so I've used of this completeness relation, multiplied this cat with the identity, and then I have the integral over x, x cat, and this clearly is the bracket with an element from the basis and, and uh, the cat in question. So this is the wave function psi of x. So we just get psi of x here. And likewise, if I have a bra, I can use the completeness relation and apply it to the bra. And then I have the complex conjugate of the wave function here. And I end up with an expression that tells me how this bra is obtained as a weighted sum, a linear superposition of the position bras that make up the basis for the, for the position variable. In summary, the kets and bras for motion along a line require generalizations of sums to integrals and of the Kronecker delta symbol to the Dirac delta function, which we can model by ordinary functions. In the next lecture, we take the step from the position cats and bras to the position operator.